Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Chip Builder Series. We are so excited to welcome the Norse Martian leader. He's creating products at warp speed. <laughs> He's visited all the planets in the business universe with four VC-funded startups, 25 failures, and he's now building a hub for indie bootstrappers. He's graduated from Bobbly to BizBot to Bowling, and he's creating products like Unicorn Platform for AI website building and allgpts.co, one of my favorite, the largest directory of GPTs. He's as prolific online as he is honest. He's a sage of startups, the Nordic god of building. I give you the greatest John since Lennon, Mr. John Rush. Wow. Let's go. I love the intro. I love the intro. Thanks for having it's me. It's so today. great to have you. Now, you've you've built, you have hundreds of thousands of users and millions of B2B to C users, and you make it easy yeah. to build, you make it look easy to build and launch. So, so how? How do you make it look so easy? Well, I've been building since 2009, so it wasn't easy back then, and I think it got easy after 10 years. So, I would say I know a lot of the things now I didn't know before, but the key knowledge I have is how to get, you know, the, into this 10 to 90 ratio where 10% of the action gives you 90% of the outcome. And I find this for every task. Like basically there's no task that I do same as other people do. So what for any task that I take on, even simple, even writing an email, I try to write it like quick and not perfect. So basically I do everything quick and not perfect. And if you, you know, sum that app, the compound effect of that is huge. You just do stuff in days, not weeks or not months. That's amazing. And so AI is kind of like a godsend for you, it seems like. Yeah. I mean, when me and AI were kind of merged or, or we met, it was a year ago or more than a year ago, I, I quickly saw this potential that, you know, I can actually automate that that stuff that I do into AI tools and other people's people can use that too, because it is difficult to actually, you know, it sounds easy. Like I do 1090, like, you know, but it, it's hard to do it for every task, but you know, and that I, I thought like, if I extract that skill into specialized AI tool for every task, then other people can just hook that AI agent I call into their process. And do the same. Amazing. So tell me if what that means in terms of you have Mars Dev or Mars X dot dev and you say code plus no code plus AI. So I'm curious what that means to you. Yeah. And like, is this moment different than the past 10 years of you building? Like has AI added some ingredient that you were missing before? Yeah, of course. So Mars X is a dev platform where you can build stuff out of micro apps which means you never have to reinvent the existing stuff. You just have to invent the new stuff or connect them in a new cool way, which saves you like 99% of the time, actually. And then there's AI that, you know, we just added a year ago. And what it did is that it simplified the process of putting things together because it sounds easy to just put things together. Like in today's world, almost everything exists, but people still end up building, you know, stuff stuff again and because they don't discover. Right? So we use AI there a lot for discovery and we use it for for modifying existing things because not everyone needs the things in exactly the same way they are. Like if you're building a car, the wheel exists, but you need not, you know, 20 inch but 30 inch or whatever. So you need some modification there. And we use AI for that. So in Mars XDEV, AI is used mostly to modify pre-built microbes and to connect them in a good way. But besides Mars X, I use AI and I and the way I see AI as the best friend of the founder is using it as an agent. So Moss use it as copilot. And I think it is not the best use. I think it is good use, but it doesn't make you crazy 100x you know, founder. But if you use it as an agent, it works when you sleep. So that's where I do. Yeah. So give us, go deeper on copilot versus agent. How do you think about those terms? And I agree, most people are using it like copilot now. So how do we get people to move from copilot to agent? Is there a mindset shift or a technical skill needed? Or what do you kind of see? It is actually, we need more tools because most tools are not agents. Uh, a year ago, my prediction was that we're going to have agents for everything in six months. And we are 12 months 
offer that protection. And the only agents on the market are built by, by me probably <laughs> today. <laughs> so I don't see more agents, but you know, my agents are crazy viral and people love them and pay for them, right? So it's not like I'm building wrong stuff that the, nobody needs. So I think the main difference between agents and copilot is that copilot is same as any other tool. You have to know how to use it. And that's the biggest challenge for any tool to teach how to use it because most people don't use it and then blame the tool mm. because they don't know how to use it right. And and you can have, you know, manuals or whatever, but it is it's still hard. And with AI, people have higher expectations. So now they're unhappy because they have higher expectations and most stop using co-pilots. If you look at the stats, most co-pilots are abandoned very quick because people just yesterday people were happy, but today they have expectations that it has to just work. And if it gives you like, you know, one mistake, you're like, oh, come on. Like, you know, I do it myself next time. Right? And we're like that. Like we're not rational. Our minds are like quite not perfect, but with, with agents, it's different. Uh, agent is like a black box. So you give it a task and it does everything and it doesn't really bother you at all. And that's why the only thing you see is that you wake up and stuff is done. And that stuff, you, you just never get bored of. You, like, you're always impressed. And then you want to use it more and more and more. So that's the difference. So agent is doing stuff without your interference, but it's asking you if it needs the data because some things it just doesn't know. So it asks you for input or for data or for answers if it needs, and then it just works. Like like a good employee. Right, <laughs> yeah. Like a good employee, an obedient child, <laughs> something there that is uh, helpful. Exactly, and exactly. Good stuff. That's right. And you're, so you get to see what people build. You have Unicorn Platform, which allows people to build websites with AI. So I'm curious watching people use your tools, whether it's Unicorn Platform or others, like what are people building? What are you seeing them trying to get to by watching user behavior rather than asking? I wish people use it more. Mm. Like people talk about AI a lot more than they used. I, I would say the ratio is like 99 to 1. So most people don't use it actually. They they talk, they repost, they 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 ask, they look, they sign up for stuff, but they, they don't use because it's really hard to change our habits. It's much harder than everybody thinks, even for stuff that gives you, you know hundred X productivity boost. Like what I see in Unicorn platform, for example, most people didn't get you know high usage of AI and they didn't really go crazy about it. But once I show them how it can be used. Once I built something that went viral in the internet and then, you know, I recorded the way I did it with all the, you know, how I entered the prompt, it made the whole page. Then we had the boost of AI. People started coming and doing that. The same people who, who saw AI before, but they were like, all right, I use it next time. So basically today, people who tried it, they use it. But people who never tried, they hesitate starting unless they see something viral that shows exactly how to use it. So that's that, that's the reality. So we're pretty far from AI adoption, actually, on, on actual front. Right. Show, don't tell, right? And I think, yeah. you know, you mentioned that earlier that you've had, you're one of the only people building agents and that they've gone viral. Have they gone viral because of that show, don't tell? Or is there something else you've done, whether it's building an audience or posting certain ways that you think have helped amplify your tools? I think it's a mix of everything I do. Uh, like, I'm I'm very active on Twitter, so it's easy for me to push something out and get initial reaction. But then I also post stuff on other platforms where I got followers as well. So I have good audience that receives my stuff quickly and reacts, and then it goes viral if it's good. But I think the key, like a lot of people have audiences. I'm I, I'm actually having not that much comparing to most. But I think the key thing with my agents is that it's really difficult to build an agent because you have to resist yourself on trying to add buttons on the interface. Mm. You know, every day you want to add more buttons, more form inputs, more interfaces, but the only button you need for the agent is turn on. That's it. You, you can't have more buttons. And it's really hard to resist the urge. And everybody else on the market who, who built agents, they started pretty well. And they ended up adding a lot of buttons and going to regular UI. While I keep my agents, you know, one button on list until now. And I think that's the key because people ask for buttons. That's the thing. The users scream for them, but 
just never listen to the users actually once you have intuition and 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 have intuition that says that they will ask for buttons because this is new they never used a tool that's working that way on autopilot right but just you know push it to them and then let them see the value for a day for a week for months and then they will never ask for a button again wow that's amazing well you have a quote you recently said you said most products you launch will die and fade into oblivion so <laughs> Are you masochistic or just Norwegian dark? <laughs> well, <laughs> it is true. So most products I launched or most code I've written, I would say 95% of the code I've written has never, you know, seen the day of the light. And especially the first years of my maker life. That's why I would say people should not expect anything from, from their launches. Like I try to enjoy the process and it's like with children, like, you know, what, once you're parents, that's what you do, right? You have expectations of your children. Like you want them to learn stuff and to do cool things. But at the same time, you're not sad if they're like not the best in school, not the best or not, not able to tell, you know, complicated story or whatever. You're just, so you're neutral, like fine. And then you're happy. So that's what I do. So most times I'm, happy and sometimes I'm very happy, right? I'm, I'm happy just for the process and I'm very happy when it works out. Why? Because I just have no expectations. Like I zero. That's amazing. Well, in close, there's a, you know, something you probably are familiar with in Norway called Jantaloven, which is basically everyone should be equal. No one should stand out, you know, tall poppy syndrome, some people call it, where the tallest poppy gets yeah. cut down. So I'm curious how you build... <laughs> in, you know, maybe in a culture that thinks that way, or even just around other people. And, you know, I think for people listening, how can they build and, and take your advice of, you know, creating something, doing the 1090, maybe when other people are encouraging them not to do that? Well, I think you have to love the process of solving problems because entrepreneurship in this form, in the tech world, is all about solving problems. Like you see something being inefficient, you add code and AI to it, and it's more efficient, right? And you have to enjoy that itself. Because in my case, like you're right, it's like in Norway, people don't celebrate money at all. Like, you know, you can't be an entrepreneur because you want to be rich, because like, even if you're rich, you know, you're never going to tell anyone because it's not a thing people tell everyone. Like people drive regular cars. But you can't have a Ferrari in Norway. <laughs> but I think I was kind of, and that's good because I think having money and financial gain as, as the reason you build stuff is the best way to fail. Some people do it, but, you know, must fail if that's their objection, objective. And in my case, I'm the person who just gets very bothered by seeing something that can be improved that's not improved yet. And that's why, like, every day I have to actually resist to not starting a new project because I see, you know, flaws everywhere. I see that I can improve this, I can improve that. And I just try to improve everything. And I think for people who want to start, they have to become very attentive to problems. Never bring it from inside. Like look around and see the problems and then solve them. Because I have a lot of people coming to me on Twitter and asking like younger people, saying that I want to start, like, give me advice, like what idea, et cetera. And, and, and then I tell them, like, pitch some ideas you would want to work on. And they bring everything from totally inside, like, you know, from, from, from bottom to up. And I'm like, no, 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 just look around and get bothered by something. If you're not bothered by anything, you have to open your eyes then because you're not looking around because there are like hundred things I'm bothered by in a single day. So you have to be bothered by few at least, right? If you're not, you're not looking around, just look around and see more of the problems. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, I think we all have problems we can now solve with some of these tools. So John Rush, thanks for speaking with us. Find him on Twitter or X as we call it, at John Rush X. And uh, you can find everything there, including Unicorn Platform, all GPTs.co and everything else he's building. So John, any final words as we close? Build stuff fast. <laughs> There we go. We want people to build. That's why we're here on the Chip Builder Series. Thanks for being here, and we will see you next time.